but a man who smells divine, <laughs> sings wonderfully, and is a true gentleman. Jack Savaretti is here! <laughs> I'm so pleased that Max and Ivan are here for another 50. They're only staying so they could hear you. <laughs> Max we, we, we just wanted to stay. No pressure. True yeah. story. <laughs> not that they want us to mention their show at the Soho Theatre again. No. no, not no, no, no. Uh, Jack, it's so lovely to see you. Congratulations on Thank the you. Roundhouse gig. Thank you very much. You were there. I was there. It was a good party. It was a good And like, I've got a real story that I'm going to share with you. Uh, uh -oh. So, I know, four days later, I went to buy my... She's doing photography GCSE. Oh, awesome. So I went into a second-hand photography shop and I walked in and the guy behind the counter... An older gentleman, very nice. I was asking his advice. He said, excuse me, did you enjoy Jack Savaretti? And I said, uh, did I enjoy Jack Savaretti? He said, yes, at the Roundhouse. So I said, I, yeah, I did very much. He said, your husband and you were loving it. You oh, were wow. swaying and you were kissing your husband. <laughs> and I said, oh, my goodness. Luckily, it was all good. He said, yes. And he said, he said, if I was to ever see you again, he thinks you are the greatest musician alive. Oh, cheers. Well, thank you, Mr. Cameron Shop. It doesn't stop there. <laughs> so then I was going on the tube about he was uh, two you. days later. No, somebody else came up to me and said, oh, you went to see Jack Savaretti at the oh, Roundhouse. Cool. I said, this is very strange. Yes, I did. And she said, he's fantastic. We're all obsessed with him. Everyone is in love with you and obsessed with well, you. Well, I love that you're associated with that. That's pretty cool. That. It's <laughs> weird. Wherever I go, I actually feel slightly like I'm your stalker. <laughs> and they know me for being a, a Jack Savaretti fan. Oh, that's awesome. Um, now, you're going to, I know we're about to play uh, Catapult in a moment. Yeah. We got that lined up to go, but you're going to sing a couple of songs for us. Yeah, sure. What are you going to sing for us first? Uh, this was the last single that you played, actually. And it's a song called Back Where I Belong. Oh. I love you. Take me out of my mind. I once could see, but now I'm blind. Too tired to try and walk away this time, place yourself. In my shoes You just might see what I got left I got it all to lose I'm such a fool, yes Let's go, I can take this We will be together Let me taste your kiss Hold on to my hand If we get lost, I'll take your home And I'll go back Back where I belong Oh, now I'll go back Back where I belong Touch, don't look down on me It's only me and you And to tango it takes two It's only me and you I'm such a fool, yes Let's go, I can take this But we gonna be together Let me taste your kiss Hold on to my hand If we get lost, I'll take your home I'll go back Back where I belong Oh, now I'll go back Back where I belong I Wasted all my eyes Feeling just like I feel Every single night Every time I like a movie reel I ride back to the start I ride down to where it burns And you feel my heart Let's go, I can't take this We gonna be together let me taste your kiss Hold on to my hand If we get lost, I'll take you home And I'll go back Let's go, I can't take this Hold on to my hand, baby For now I'll go back Back where I belong Oh, now I'll go back Back where I belong I'll go back Yay! Yay, 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 yay I Thank you. Oh, that was 
was fantastic. Thanks very much. Thanks. I'm really Thanks. embarrassed now because I got slightly overexcited. I'm so pleased you were singing with your head down. I, the two lovely girls that are with you. I'm pleased your wife's not here today because she'd think I'm completely mad. But the two girls who came with you today, they're sitting out there smiling at me because oh, I was yeah, just going, yeah. like, I was like some mad woman. Um, and now we're just going to play a bit of Catapult. Tell us about Catapult. Oh man, this is a song I'm really proud of. I wrote it. I mean, I say that, sorry, not to sound like I'm no. bragging, but this is one of these songs I wrote with an incredible singer songwriter called John Green. And he's one of these guys that you sit in a room, you learn while working, which is, there's not many people in the industry that that happens with. And so it was just one of those annoyingly song. It's annoying because it doesn't happen every time. Um, he just played this chord progression, and I started rambling over it. And within about an hour or two, this song just showed up. And it's those songs that you love them because you don't feel like you wrote them. You feel like they just kind of man luckily hit you like lightning, like come through you. So it was a very, oh, wow. it was a pleasant experience because you, it's nice when songs happen like that because the, it's, I think it's when your subconscious kind of takes over and therefore you enjoy it as a performer, you enjoy listening to it as well because you haven't spent nights trying to write the right rhyme or the right reason. It just sort of comes out a bit like a cathartic Do you know what we're going to do? Therapy. At the top of the next hour at 5 o'clock, we're going to play that in full for you. Cool. So we're going to play that at 5 o'clock so everyone can hear it completely. Right That's cool. a beautiful song. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Cheers, so we'll do that at you. 5 o'clock. Um, now, as you, uh, you're, you're so lovely. There's a couple of things. We're not allowed to say where it's taking place, but we're doing a very, very special big Christmas show. We're calling it Gabby's Christmas in Paradise, but we're not allowed to say exactly where it's coming from. It's a massive outside broadcast. We already We think we've got Will Young coming along. Right um, the overtones are coming along too. We've got the cast of EastEnders. Uh, we also have uh, Bonnie Langford and we have Samantha Spiro, who's in a brand new uh, uh, spy drama that's going to be on BBC Two this week as well. And uh, we think there's a possibility that we might have Jack Savaretti. But he's he sort of said he's going to think about it. No, no, I'm, I'm 100%. Like... If I'm here, I'm, uh, I'll show up for sure. Oh, if I'm here, you've got to ask the two girls outside. Yeah, I'll ask the two girls outside. Are they listening, heavily? It's December the 6th from 3 to 6, live, our live big Christmas OB. I'd and, love um, to be there. That would be, be fantastic. That would be really lovely. Uh, now, as we're uh, having a, uh, an Elvis special, well, yeah. Jack Savaretti, half hour, and Elvis special as well, um, because of Priscilla Presley, um, we asked if you'd do an Elvis song. We were told you wouldn't, and you've walked in and said you're very happy to. Yeah, I'm very happy to. I kind of thought about day. it in the sort of car over here, and there's a song that was very important to me that it was actually written by somebody else um, it was written by Willie Nelson um, and many people have done it but Elvis's version is always the one that kind of leaves a lump in your throat I've never played this before I've literally got it out in front of me so anything could happen oh, how incredible but we can we can give it a go bless you thank you sure. which one is it uh, you're always on my mind thank you maybe I didn't love you Quite as often as I could have And maybe I didn't treat you Quite as good as I should have And if I made you feel second best Girl, I'm sorry I was blind And you were always on my mind You were always on my mind And maybe I didn't hold you All those lonely, lonely times I guess I never told you I'm so happy that you're mine Little things I should have said and done I just never took the time You were always on my mind You were always on my mind Tell, help me Tell 
tell me that your sweet love hasn't died Give, give me, give me one more chance to keep you satisfied. I'll keep you satisfied. the time But you were always on my mind You were always on my mind With a very out of tune guitar oh <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> Cheers, thanks Oh, my Michael, I was—I thought I was going to cry. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was absolutely extraordinary. You've got to do that when you're on stage. Just <laughs> with you. With a tune guitar. I'll do no, my guitar seriously, next. you and uh, the Cheers, girls outside you. with you were just giving, saying yes, <laughs> saying yes. That was incredible. Cheers, thank you. And that's one of those goosebump moments that I realise I'm very lucky to do my job. <laughs> Thanks um, very much. The, the amazing thing about you at the Roundhouse is you—you, you, it was as if you—you you couldn't quite believe that this was all happening. Do you, yeah, and, I mean, and every I made time a I joke. I said this yeah. is an this is what they call an overnight success. <laughs> um, when it really hasn't been. Um, yeah, you know, I think the, the most overwhelming thing that I found of this last tour was the diversity of our crowds. And that is something that I didn't realize how much that would affect me. But when you look into a room at a lot of shows that you go to and everybody looks the same or everybody's kind of looks like the band, I never really get it. It freaks me out. It always leaves me a bit uneased. And when we stand on stage and look out into the crowd, there's so much diversity in age, in culture, in everything that it makes me feel it's not often that I get that we get to see that. Even on stage there's diversity. I mean, everybody on the stage is from a different country. And so this whenever there's a mass group of people from different cultures and different ages and different age groups that for some reason in that little short period of time get to all kind of click, that's when music that's when it gets me high. That's when that's when I get the rush. That that's the reason we do it. So the Roundhouse being the biggest room we've ever seen that happening definitely had an effect on me. It happened to me as well in Manchester. We played the Ritz in Manchester, and it was genuinely, I mean, without sounding incredibly corny, it was an emotional experience because I looked into the crowd and everybody was so different, and that made us. I remember even looking at the band and thinking, "This is this is fun. This is good. It doesn't <laughs> feel like we're selling anything, which so often happens when you go to shows. You feel like you're being sold a lifestyle. There's so much of this kind of branding behind music these days that I got a little, you, it can sometimes just get a little bit, you can get very cynical about it very easily. And when a crowd is so diverse like that, it reminds you why you're actually doing it and why it's so much fun to do it. It was one, one of those things that when we said, you know, it wasn't a, you didn't have a, a particular age group or a particular type. I mean, yeah. there were lots of kids there and there were adults there. And my kids are eight and 14 and they listen to you and they love yeah. you. Jeez. And, and I, 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 I played your track to my dad, who's uh, much, much older than they are, I'm pleased to say. Um, and, and he thinks you're fantastic too. So it is great. And Thanks, it must be, uh, do you, do you, um, can, it's as if you pinch yourself. I, I don't know yeah. if it's really like that, but you, do you not understand what you've got? Is it that? No, it's not, I mean, I don't think it's about understanding what we have or don't have. It's more about everybody up there has worked hard for it. Like, nobody takes it for granted. Like, we, we didn't just happen. It didn't happen overnight. So if it had have happened overnight, I would have genuinely believed I was the bee's knees mm. and thought that everything I did was, you know, boom, this is easy. And I see that happen to a lot of artists. It, has, it does happen overnight. Yeah. This hasn't happened overnight for us. This is the fourth album. It's been a good 10 years at least that we've been working on it. And everybody up there has been a part of it. If not from day one, you know, even if they walk in the door yesterday, they become a part of what we're about and what's going on here very quickly. And to see it grow, you know, 
only two years ago, people wouldn't hire us for a gig in front of 50 people. You're kidding and me. Then, yeah, and then suddenly we're doing, you know, then we got we get to see a room like the Roundhouse, which is such a magnificent room as well. That's also Was it Radio 2 then? Was it Radio 2 started playing you and then suddenly... Yeah, yeah Radio 2 have been with me from the beginning. I got to take my hats off and a huge thank you because my first single got B-listed on Radio 2 about eight or nine years ago. And um, so I'm very... And they've stuck by it, which at times they would have been very wise to back off because it was difficult and a lot of people were doubting it and a lot of and it, you know they could have easily bet on a horse that was going to flop sort of thing instead they stuck with it we stuck with it so the relationship has grown now and it's it's a good relationship and i think it's nice that there are radio stations that do take that gamble it's so what's the word i'm looking for um, rare <laughs> it's so rare but also in the music industry these days it's so quick everything's so quick like if something doesn't work it's like that's it it's out and it's terrible because That's awful, I don't think most artists know who they are until their 10th album. <laughs> you Do know, you know, it's, it's like that with uh, stand-up comedians.